and we're on the air. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the show that, man, makes milk never curdle. This is the Sports Box, where the only opinion that matters, it's right here. I am Mike Galetta, a.k.a. Hampton Mike, along with my partner, Brian, the Ranger of Tar. Brian, how are you today? You smell that football? You smell it? Still smelling it. And today, Brian, as a matter of fact, in our attempts for 32 previews of 32 NFL teams, we take a little stroll down to the Baltimore area and talk to the guy who lives in the Baltimore area who's going to give us a little background on the Ravens. Let's bring him on the show right now, Brian, and talk to him. His name is Ty G. Glenn. Ty G, what's going on, pal? Hey, how you doing, Mike? Thanks for having me. Hey, you know what? Not a problem, Ty G. We just love guys like yourself coming on and giving us a ton of knowledge. So let's get to it. Brian, stat me. Baltimore Ravens. Let's go. Baltimore Ravens, 8-8 uh, eight eight last year. Second place in the AFC North. That was not good enough to make the playoffs last year. Uh, they struggled a bit offensively, especially on the ground. They had a 28th ranked rushing attack. Uh, they tried their best to make up for it through the air. They ranked 12th there, averaged out to 17th, scored the 21st most points in the league. Joe Flacco, another great year, over 4,300 yards, 20 touchdowns. Uh, Terrence West was the team's leading rusher, 774 yards with five touchdowns, and leading receiver was Mike Wallace, a touch over 1,000 yards and four scores. Defensively, they're always great in Baltimore. It always seems to be the strength of that team. They were ninth against the pass and fifth against the run. They're seventh best defense in the league. And they're also tied for the league lead with 18 defensive interceptions, which is fantastic. Yep. And they added to that by taking Marlon Humphrey, a cornerback out of Alabama. Um, Taiji, I want to kind of start there. So for a team that's so good defensively, but had a couple of holes offensively, were you kind of surprised that they went corner in that, that early in the draft? It doesn't surprise me at all. It was a uh, position in need. So uh, going corner there, um, especially how deep it was early, it did surprise me. But, you know, I wanted to go offense, but um, it didn't surprise me at all. You know, knowing I mean, you know, and never knows what he's going to do. Hey, Ty G, you talk about this offense with Joe Flacco having, having a good year like he did uh, last year. You know, I, I, people are always saying Joe Flacco's eh, he's this, he's that. I think Joe Flacco's a good quarterback in this offense. And with the wide receiving core that they have with the acquisition of Jeremy Macklin, uh, you have Jeremy Macklin, Mike Wallace, uh, Rasheed Perriman, and even, uh, even Michael Campanero back there. Do you think the, the Ravens have enough weapons on offense to really make their mark and make a move this year? Absolutely. You just got to play your cards right. Um, all across the board, uh, running running the ball, uh, receiving. We have enough weapons. Um, you know, we just have to make it work and, and just believe in ourselves. And, you know, just let them fall where they may, you know. But we just have to take care of our business. We can't beat ourselves. Once we beat ourselves, then it doesn't matter how many weapons we have, you know. In the same sense, Ty Gima, I guess my follow-up question to that is with the running back situation there too. Your 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 main guy, I think, is Terrence West right now, um, and you also picked up Danny Woodhead in the offseason. Do you think that again is enough to, to help Joe Flacco with this air attack? Absolutely. Um, uh, Terrence West has a good balance. He's a and then you know Danny Woodhead is great coming off the backfield on third down and you know you can mix them up with the pads again round them up in the slot I actually think it's a good one two combination Taiji, you take a look at their defense from a season ago and as I mentioned in, in the lead and you know they're always a team that, that is very very potent defensively I think it, it starts with good coaching but if you look at the sacks on this team I mean other than Terrell Suggs who had eight nobody really had that many I mean Tim Jernigan had five he's since left um, Terrell Sully really keeps battling the clock. I mean, is, is there a – I mean, how comfortable are you that, that he's the defensive leader given where he is in his career? I'm very confident. You know, he's always there mentally, and I'm, I'm very confident he'll still be there physically. I'm never going to, you know, doubt on the player because, you know, he's getting up there in age. I think that's just a whole bunch of talk, really. You know, somebody – Somebody is isn't able to play. You know they wouldn't. You know step uh -huh. on the cleats and play. You know I think Ron has plenty of left in the tank. And with the the rest of our pass rushing game, I think Ali did a great job going in the draft and picking up pass rushers. So I don't think our pass rusher would be a problem at all. I think actually it's going to be greater than uh, said a lot of years we had. You know coming up this season. We're talking to Ty G. Ty G. Glenn, uh, our Baltimore Ravens affiliate for the sports box. Ty G., in the same sense we talked about the defense, you talked about the defensive backs, 
Um, you know, you got Jimmy Smith back there, Eric Weedle, who they brought over from San Diego a while ago, Tony Jefferson, and even Brandon Carr brought over from Dallas. The talk of this, the preseason, though, is Marlon Humphrey. Um, do you think Marlon Humphrey is going to crack this defensive backfield uh, early, or is it going to take some time during the season to get him get him uh, you know slotted in there? Um, I'm not really sure. I didn't get to see a lot of Marlon Humphrey um, as of yet. Um, well, I guess we'll see in the later two games. You know, he's been out. We didn't have. Um, we didn't get a lot of good reps in the first two games. I think he was injured with like a. I, I forget what it is, but. Um, on another lot of Humphrey, I think uh, it'll take some time, maybe a couple games. I'm not, I'm not too sure if he's just gonna, you know, come right on and you know make flashes with um, the limited reps that he already has. Um, so I guess we'll see. I haven't seen enough of him yet. So my last question, Ty G, and uh, I'll, I'll send it over to Brian. This offense, you know, kind of struggled inside the 30 yard line this year. Not even the red zone, inside the 30. But you got an awesome kicker in Justin Tucker who who gets it done for you and, and is well known around the league. Is this Buff, is this Baltimore team going to be able this year to, to get over that hump and crack, you know, from the thirty yard and in this year? We have to be more aggressive. You know, we got to support Joe Flacco with the running game, especially when we're inside the thirty yard line. If we're not aggressive, you know, we're coming up to the yard, coming up to the ball, our nonchalant, you know, just acting like we just don't even want to get in the end zone. Just feel like our energy. You know, just doesn't want to be as good as it should be. Um, being aggressive is definitely going to support our offense. Um, we have to mix it up and be more supportive for Joe Flacco. Then maybe you know our numbers will go up a little bit more. So, but before we take a look at the schedule here, the one thing I really want to find out for me is what's going on down there with the fan base as far as Joe Flacco goes. I mean. He hasn't really practiced yet. He had some injuries, and we don't even know he's going to start the season. What are you hearing as far as what his status is? Uh, I'm not hearing. I think just hearing that he's on schedule, and you know we're a little discreet about our injuries, and you know when are they going to be coming back? And I, I don't think it's too severe. Um, Joe, you know, he's pretty tough. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, man. I'm not really too um, worried about the quarterback situation until. You know, it comes into the regular season game, and then Joe gets a you know gets a real nick, and then he's out, and then what are we going to do? That's why I think I uh, I think we should you know bring that bring in a veteran presence. You know, you know, Ryan's not going good enough. I'm not saying he's not going to do good. He's not doing good enough, but he's not playing as good as Ryan should be playing right now. And um, I actually think it, it it may be a concern, but you know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not too, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. If I'm Ozzy, I'm bringing in another quarterback, but, you know, I'm not Ozzy, so. Well, they do have Ryan Mel. I know how good he could take over the offense. But, um, so you look at the schedule, Ty G, and, and, you know, I always, Brian, I'll tell you, I like to look for what's called murderer's row, a spot in the schedule where a team is going to either struggle or it's going to be a big spot for them to come out of. And looking at the Ravens' schedule, you know, they were actually, schedule makers were pretty good to them. Uh, the spot I see it's going to be pretty tough, though, is coming out of week 10 out of bye week. You got week 11 at Green Bay. Even though you're home, you're playing a tough Houston team with a tough defense. You are playing Detroit at home. Again, Detroit, a team that can steal one for you. And then they're off to Pittsburgh. Um, you tell us about that stretch after the bye week. Do you see Baltimore coming out and, you know, having, having a 2 2 record out of that, or do you see a little bit better? Uh, I see 500 of better. Some somebody's going to get us something, or somebody is going to get us. I'm just going to be realistic there, especially that Green Bay game. Yeah. I don't really have a lot of confidence going in that game. Not even a lot to you. You know, we got a we got we got a good defensive backfield back there. You know, we're going up to an unfamiliar territory with you know a lot of elite players going on up there. We just might get got that game. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we drop it, especially if we play good. You know, I'll take that game. Uh, Houston, you know, great, great defense. Um, but I don't know, quarterback situation kind of hit me there. They're going to have maybe a lot of errors going on. And then I believe uh, one of their receivers is out too, so offense might not be as good. Um, Detroit, I believe. Um, so either 2-2 or 2-3-1, or you know, that's here's a good stretch coming after the bye week. But, you know, I think this schedule is a little bit more supportive for us as far as us getting in the playoffs, trying to chase, you know, 10-6 and 11-5. and five. So, um, yeah, I believe he's 500-3-1.
and Brian, I say that because you look at their schedule, the schedule makers were nice to them because they have one West Coast game and three Midwest games. Everything else is well, here, coast. Well, here's what stands out to me, right? What stands out to me for the for the Ravens this year is their divisional games are kind of clustered at the beginning yep. and the end of the season. Yep. So they have three division games in their first four weeks, and they have three division games in their last four weeks. Yep. So yep. that middle is going to be a lot of them, it is going to be a little bit of travel back and forth on familiar areas of the teams that don't really play that much, yep. but... You know, I, I, again, I, I think it's between them and the Bengals to be the second best team in the division. I yep. think that's pretty, pretty clear. It might come down to the end. It might come down to the end. And yep. again, I think that the fact that they have some, that they have the Bengals at home on New Year's Eve, that might be for a playoff spot. Yep. And I think it's definitely in, in, in the Baltimore favor that they have that game at home. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely going to be for a playoff game. Yeah, so Taiji, I'll, I'll lead into that too. The, the, looking at those last four games of the year, you're talking at Pittsburgh, at Cleveland. Home against Indy and, and home against Cincinnati, you're looking pretty much where Baltimore is going to stand. They're going to have to win probably two, if not three, of those last of those last four games to get in the playoffs. Do you agree? I believe so, especially they got all AFC teams. Uh, I think Indy is one of those games too. Yeah, um, we're we're going to be fighting. Of course, we're we're going to be beating ourselves. Other teams going to be beating themselves. And, you know, Pittsburgh beat themselves a lot. Lady on Bell misses about four games. Yeah. We got a couple of those, especially in South Carolina and stuff like that. You know, Big Ben's probably going to miss a couple games. You know, something's just going to happen. And uh, we're all be fighting for a playoff spot. Cincinnati, you know, beats themselves every single season. So yeah, we'll all be right there on the bubble. And they also had the chat. They also had London this year too. Yep. <laughs> That's another. East Coast so, game. We'll put you on the spot, Ty G. So it's, it, it's it's an interesting year for the Ravens. Again, you know they're still in the conversation, but they're trying to hold this uh, this team together. How, how do you think the season ends up for your boys? We're chasing ten and six. We're going to be chasing ten and six. Um, we didn't do as good as I wanted us to do in the offseason, but we definitely is starting to get there. Um, we got a couple of good teams in there. You know, for you fantasy players, I think that's I think two underrated signings this this off season were done by the Ravens. I think Macklin. Danny Macklin is for sure because and, and Woodhead. Flacco is a guy who likes to throw down the field. Yep. I think that's going to open up Macklin a lot more yep. than what he had in camp. Yep. And I don't know about you, Ty G. I think Danny Woodhead's a hell of an addition to this offense yep. because you know they don't really have a big tight end, and Woodhead can be that screen guy, that dump yep. ball pass, that catch a lot of passes he, out of the back. I really believe yep. that. I think it's going to be a, a dimension they haven't really had in a long time. Absolutely. I think it would be a great addition as well. What I would really want to see is Captain Nero stay healthy. I think he could be an yeah. excellent, um, excellent value and, you know, moving and change, possession receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, he gets that chunk stuff and gets us down the field in a field goal range or actually knocking down the door or something. I actually want to see him stay healthy. He'll be a good addition to our offense. It is funny how nobody really says anything about Joe Flacco or the Ravens and you know, quietly they get there every Listen, year. Listen, the, the <laughs> question's always asked, is Joe Flacco elite? Listen, take a look at his hand. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Man yeah. wins. I, I definitely think he's, he's, he's a good quarterback to have. So. But that's all the time we have for the Baltimore Ravens. I want to thank our affiliate to the Baltimore Ravens, Ty G. Glenn, for hopping online and helping us out. Ty G., thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate it much. And if anybody thing does happen in the Baltimore area or with the Ravens, we are going to grab Ty G., get him back on the line, talk a little Ravens football. Is that okay, pal? No problem. See that? You only bring winners on the show. That's nothing but love here, I'm telling you. So remember, you can always get us on social media if you need to. As you know, this is one of 32 NFL team previews we're doing for you to get you ready for a great NFL season. If you haven't seen your team yet, it's probably because you haven't subscribed to the Sports Box. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, both at Sports Box Show, so you're along for the ride. And you know when we're previewing your team. See what happens. Yep, and if you haven't subscribed by now, what the hell are you waiting for? Get on the train. Get on the Sports Box train. It's a fast and growing well, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, that's fine. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, at the Sports Box, the only opinion that matters, folks, is right here. Thanks for watching. See you. This episode of the Sports Box is brought to you by Mike Up Entertainment and DJ Mike Villardi. For all of your event planning needs, make sure you contact Mike at 609 864 5925 and tell him that you saw him on the Sports Box. One, two, three. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe.